Welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss our theorem that classifies the column space of a given matrix as a subspace of Rm. In particular, if we let our matrix A have M rows and N columns, we know by definition that the column space of A, denoted COLA, is just the span of the columns of A. Well, in this case, there are N columns, so this is a span of N different columns, each of which is an M by 1 vector. In order to show that the column space is a subspace, we have to show three properties. Property one, we want to show that zero is an element of the column space of A. Well, note that every element in the column space is of size m by 1. By definition of the span, we know that each element of the column space is a linear combination of the columns of A, but the columns of A are m by 1. Therefore, every element of the column space must be of size m. This 0, we can conclude immediately, has to be of size m, and do, we want to know, is the 0 vector in the span of the columns. Notice that 0 is an element of the column space if and only if 0 is equal to a times x for some x element of Rn. That's the definition of what the column space is. Column space is the set of all outputs such that there exists at least one input where we take the matrix A, multiply by the input, and produce the output. This is a linear combination of the columns of A. But we always know that at least one solution to the homogeneous linear system is the zero vector. So if we have x is the zero vector in Rn, then a times x would be a times 0, which is of course our 0. But the moment we know that there exists a preimage, that there exists this n by 1, 0, that means immediately that the 0 vector is indeed in our column space. So we've just confirmed the first of the properties. The second property of a subspace is closed under vector addition. In particular, if we let x and y be an element, in this case, you know what, I, I think instead of using x and y, I might use, uh, I don't know, b1 and b2. So we're used to thinking about these as elements in our codomain. So if we let our to b1 and b2 be in our column space, we want to show, we want to show that the sum of the two of these vectors is also in the column space. So let b1 and b2 be an element of the column space of A. Well, that implies immediately that b1 and b2 are in the span of the columns of A. This is by definition of the span, which implies there exists an x1, an x2 element of Rn, such that ax1 equals b1 and ax2 equals b2. 
let's think through this carefully. In order for B1 to be in the span, it means that B1 has to be able to be written as a linear combination of the columns of A, but that means that we should be able to produce scalar weights on each of the columns of A to get B1. Well, that is the exact matrix vector multiplication problem. There must exist. The moment we know B1 is in the span of the columns of A, there must exist some vector x1 in the domain space such that A times x1 is B1. The same thing can be true said immediately about B2 by definition of what it means to be in the column space. So now we consider the sum of these vectors, B1 plus B2, we know that for x equal to x1 plus x2, a times x is going to be a times x1 plus x2, which is just ax1 plus ax2, which is b1 plus b2. And this implies immediately that there exists an x such that a times x is in b1 plus b2, which means b1 plus b2 must be in the column space. Because the column space is the span, and we've just shown there exists a preimage. So now we know immediately, not only is the zero vector in the column space, we also know that the column space is closed under addition. The last step of the proof that the column space is indeed a subspace of Rm is to prove that the column space is closed under scalar multiplication. To do so, we let any constant c be in R, in R in this case, and b be an element of the column space. And we want to show that c times b must also be an element of the column space. However, consider b element of the column space of A implies b is equal to A times x for some x in Rn, which implies c times b is equal to c times ax, which implies that our output vector c times b is just a c times x. But we know c times x is an element of Rn, which means that the output cb does have a preimage. But this implies immediately that cb is in the span of the columns of A, which it must then be in the column space. And now we see immediately that the column space is indeed closed under scalar multiplication. And we conclude that with 1, 2, and 3, the column space of our matrix must be a subspace of Rm. And we, we have been, in this class, we've been thinking a lot about that as the codomain of our map. Right? In other words, if we look at the map matrix vector multiplication, A times X, the output space is Rm, and we just saw that the column space of A is a subspace of that codomain. More on this in videos to come.